The next item we want to look at is going to be working with adjustment layers. First though, I want to get rid of the mask on this one. I don't like it. If I click on the little chain next to it, this indicates that these two are locked together or connected together where one goes, the other goes. If I click on the chain and now with that selected, I can drag that mask to the garbage and it will prompt me and say, hey, apply the layer mask before moving. And I'll say, nope, delete it, goes away. Now that face is there. So what I want to show next is that we have something called adjustment layers. So we looked at, we can ditch a mask, that's good. Now adjustment layers, we can see we have all of these adjustments. The nice part about doing adjustment layers, and we look at this after we learn about masks, is because these adjustment layers will be a mask adjustment layer. We also have image adjustments where we can do all the same things, but these are all destructive. Once we apply these, there's no, we can go back in our history, we can undo, but we can't selectively apply it to just part of an image, so they're not super flexible. There's times and places for doing that, especially in a single layered image, then it's not a big deal, but often it's going to be much more useful or effective to apply adjustments to individual layers and then temper the mass that goes with it. So each are fairly powerful. It used to be one of the more uh, common ones that people would work with would be our levels so that we would adjust uh, levels on the image and so we can see how it's applying those in to the image and we're not getting a lot of graph over here showing us what's going on and part of that is because the majority of our image is all white um, going to jump over into one of the other images here just so we can see a little bit more. So now if I were to apply levels, we can see this histogram here shows me the concentrations of lights, mediums, and darks inside the image so that we can uh, work with it. Um, need to make it a little bit bigger so we have some more room to work with. So we have the darks. We have the mid-tones, and you can see there's a lot of concentration in the dark and mid-tone, and then we have the lights over here. So it's pretty common if we just hit auto, where it tries to auto-correct for the levels and move the dark point over, move the midpoint over a little bit, and it's also going to be applying changes to each individual color channel in our image, the red, the green, and the blue which if we look at the channels, we can see that uh, we have, uh, this is the red information that combines with the green information that combines with blue information to make our finished image. So if we look at each color channel as an individual, each one is essentially a grayscale image, but it's taking and combining those together. So now green and blue creates that, we get our finished image red and blue creates. So that should give you some understanding because when we take red and green light and shine them together, it actually creates yellow light. It doesn't mix and create brown. That would be when we're working with paint. So when we work with light, the more light you put together, the brighter or whiter it becomes. So levels are a pretty common effect that people can apply. We see it, the auto levels is pretty light. It didn't do a lot. Now, curves are levels on steroids, so we can really adjust things. If you want to create a truly uh, crazy solarized image, then you can do that using curves. Now, what's nice about this is I've put these curves into my image. I've combined it together. This is a mask, so if I were to paint on this, it's all white, that's what's taking effect everywhere. But now if I paint on it, we can see how that turns it off. 
Something else that we could do is we could now choose Select All, and then, which is Command A, or go under Select and choose All, so you Command A at the top, then Copy Merged, which it's copy, the standard copy is Command or Control C. If we had a shift into it, it's now the merged version, and now I can paste that into my image. And the reason I'm doing that is now I could take this same image and start combining it using either layer blending modes, do a little bit of work with the opacity on it, and then I could add a custom mask to this where then I go and bring back so we now see the original light in the room. So when we do this, we have a lot of options combining things together. Other adjustment layers that we commonly work with, um, exposure when using a photo image is quite useful. If we turn this off, so we see the original image, now we have exposure, so we can adjust the exposure. So if we take a picture and we under over expose it, now we can adjust that. We can also offset the exposure, we can correct for color. So if you're used to shooting with a digital camera in photo raw, exposure is a little bit of what happens with that. Another good part about working with adjustment layers is Unlike here, if I choose image adjust, once I do it, it's done. Here, I can now go back, choose this layer, go to its properties, and there it is. And I don't have to leave it where it was, but I can adjust it. So it comes down to we just have tremendous flexibility when we're working with adjustment layers. And they're really, they're just really, really powerful items. Hue saturation is another one that's really fun for doing color correction, but also color stylization. So now I can click and choose and decide what hue I want to colorize it. So if I want to create a sepia tone image, I can do that. I can boost up the saturation of it so we can create some really fun things this way as we combine our images together. Looking back at this original image that we have here and I'm going to uh, just take all of these layers here and let's make it bigger so we can see what's going on. Now if I want these layers to look a certain way or combine it, now I can go into hue saturation Choose Colorize. Now colorizes the whole thing. And I can make it green because I'm hulking out. Again, it's a mask. So if I want to minimize some of it, let's get a big brush so we can do it quickly. So if we want the snoke face in the background to not be green, now we can get rid of it. But you'll notice now the other two, because they have a shared color, they start to look like they belong together. And this is really important when you are compositing multiple images. And we can take this adjustment layer, and I can even combine it in, which I kept more now of the original color, but you can see how it deepener made those shadow areas get a little bit richer. So the thought process here is we composite different image assets together, but generally their colors and textures aren't going to match. So we need to use both layer mass and layer blending modes and opacity and most importantly, adjustment layers to tweak the colors of each of our assets so that they blend and create a finished harmonious project.